Hi folks, in this video, I explain how to use the PL proof machine, an automatic proof checker for Cider's Logic for Philosophy Chapter 2, the axiomatic system. The first thing to notice is that in the upper right-hand corner, you can toggle between the modes and the directions. So if you're checking this out for the first time, I recommend reading those directions. One thing they tell you is that to write atomic sentences, just use regular letters like P, Q, and R. So if I wanted to write uh, not P, I'll just use tilde for negation and uh, P for the atomic sentence B, and you can write the justification as premise. So this system allows you, this machine allows you to do proofs from no premises or proofs from sets of premises. Besides premise, you can also use any of the axioms, PL1, 2, and 3 as justifications. So if I want to write an instance of PL1, I'm just going to write P arrow Q arrow P, and I can cite this PL1, and that will check also check out green for me. It's not just that basic instance of it. So I can, any instance of PL1 is going to check out just fine. So if I add some negation symbols in here, this is still a correct application of PL1, and that's going to check out just fine. Now I can show you how to use modus ponens. If we do not not Q arrow not P, this is going to be modus ponens citing lines one and two. So for the arrow, notice what I'm using is the dash and greater than symbol. So this allows students to type all of the symbols of our logical system just using a standard keyboard. Also notice in the citations, I didn't leave any spaces over here when I wrote modus ponens or between those commas and numbers, and I didn't write any spaces in my formulas. So the basic operation of the machine requires no spaces. But if, if you find spaces way more natural, you can just turn that on. So if you want to be able to write modus ponens and you know put a space after the semicolon, or if you like to put spaces between some of your connectives, now these are going to check out as just fine. If the spaces are off, these are going to turn red, which is telling students that there's some sort of syntax error. And there's also a message field down here. So if something ever turns red, you can look down in the message field uh, to get some feedback, which is telling you sort of what the problem is. This really allows students to uh, learn a lot um, from the software because they can get feedback, what kind of syntax errors they might have, and understand why some of their um, attempts at writing uh, axioms or something is, are not checking out properly. Okay, so besides all of those uh, basic rules, modus ponens, uh, the axioms, and premise, you can also enable the toolkit. So uh, the toolbox for CIDR's system allows you to use derived rules as justifications. And if under modes you turn the toolbox on, you can actually click all of those uh, parts of the toolbox, or you can just allow students to use some of them for specific problems. And this sort of mimics the way CIDR works through and proves more and more compl complicated uh, arguments and formulas uh, from a limited set of rules. So let me, let me give you an example by showing you how the deduction theorem works. Let's say we wanted to prove something like uh, transitivity. So if we had the premise P arrow Q, and we also had the premise Q arrow R, Uh, what we can do is we can prove uh, the final formula. I'll just write it down here, uh, P arrow R. So how does this work inside our system? Well, we first need uh, to use the deduction theorem to prove this, uh, or at least this makes it infinitely easier. So I need to first assume P, and then I'm going to use the deduction theorem after I've proven R to get my final conclusion. So one clarification, when Cider makes assumptions for the deduction theorem, he also uses the justification premise. Students are going to be quite used to the, the justification assume from their natural deduction systems. So I've changed the temporary assumption to assume rather than premise. So this assume is going to check out. And that's what allows me to then set up the deduction theorem. And that's explained up here at the top. So now if I do modus ponens a couple of times, I'll just say modus ponens 1 and 3 to prove Q. And then I can prove our modus ponens. We're looking at two and four. Now, finally, I can use the deduction theorem. So the justification here is just DT. And then I need to cite where I made my temporary assumption, which is line three, and then the consequent that I'm applying this to. And if you want to check the entire proof, you can click that button. And then it's giving me some feedback saying, hey, I proved uh, this thing correctly. So you can control um, what kind of directions uh, you give to students and what kind of uh, bits of the toolbox they're allowed to use on any particular problems. Besides 
sort of sandbox mode where you have total control over all of these things. There are also some practice problems. If you scroll down to the bottom of any one of these pages, you can check out these practice problems. Like let's say for example, that I wanna prove contraposition one. This is not going to allow me to um, use the justification premise. So premise, the premises are given for me and that's fixed. I can't then just justify my conclusion with premise and, and hope that that's gonna work out. Rather, how this, how the toolbox rules, which ones I'm allowed to use is already set up and fixed for me and what my premise and my conclusion are. And I just have to try to use the rules that are available to me to get, uh, to prove this conclusion actually follows from those premises. So a lot of these problems that were given down here are following uh, Cider's directions in the textbook. So for example, when you're trying to prove contrapositive two, you're allowed to appeal to the previous rules, uh, derived rules that Cider has gone through. So just like that, when you try to prove contrapositive two uh, in, this, in the proof machine, you're allowed to appeal to those rules that are already all given for you previously. So this allows students to sort of work through the textbook as they go, uh, as they follow along and make sure that they're sort of being active and getting practice and getting feedback on how they're doing. Okay, thanks.